pronuri. To understand that relationships are the bread and butter, so to speak, of Marshallese life. My mother angered me by teaching me Mantin Majo. From her, I learned to appreciate my roots. My father, from our Namrit, was a church pastor. Beyond this important calling, he was also a school teacher. He was literally my first teacher, first to seventh grade. Indeed, my early education did not take place in fancy schools in the urban centers. There was a, a lot. Um, there was a lot to learn from the environment and growing up in the other islands. There is freedom to roam the island and the surrounding seas, and we became more appreciative of our environment. My father instilled in me a love of learning that endures to this day. I observed him reading, learning into the night so that he can teach and share that knowledge with those around him. His can-do attitude taught me the simple value of hard work. He taught me about responsibilities. In his life work, I learned the importance of service, of working in service to others. I learned that life is not about oneself or material riches, but rather it's about making life better for those around us. Each one of us is able to make something of ourselves because of that family foundation and what we learned growing up. My story is no different. I want to share briefly about my educational career and, I, and why I went for a doctorate in education. I hope my story will inspire one of you sitting in the audience this afternoon. My own inspiration came from a friend of mine who sadly died some years early of breast cancer. Dr. Rita Hokoginos from the island of Rota in the Mariana Islands inspired me to seek a doctorate in education, having completed one herself before I knew her. She was the first one to get her doctorate in education from the CNNI. She was a pioneer. Rita was a passionate educator, a very loving and down-to-earth person who inspired those around her to work hard for the cause of education. Of course, curiosity played a role in this as well. Above all, I was curious to see what a regular Marshallese woman like myself is capable of doing. The process, seven years in the making, was not an easy one. Thanks to support network of family and friends, especially my husband and children, I was able to complete my degree requirements. I want to say though that getting a doctorate is less about being smart and more about being persistent. Never give up. If anything else, the diploma I finally received is a testimony to the resilience, capabilities, and capacities of Marshallese people to achieve to their full potential. Indeed, if an outer island girl can get her doctorate, so can all of you. Speaking of resilient people, our ancestors were resilient people who lived and thrived in these islands. How did they do it? Fast forward to 2011, and all we ever hear is Ryan Gay even know. We see mass migration to better lives elsewhere. Is life really that much difficult, or have we lost our resilience as a people? When we examine the recent history of the Marshall Islands, it seems somehow as someone has always taken care of us. First, the Germans, then the Japanese, and now our friends, our American friends. In the process of being taken care of, or colonized, as others will say, we learn to depend on others for our well-being as a people. In 2011, we continue to be taken care of in one sense or another. Contact payments, nuclear payments, land payments, and other forms of payments, all of which we deserve, so we tell ourselves. So why are we surprised when some of us 
want to sit back, relax, and be taken care of. And we wonder, where is that sense of urgency, a sense of hope, self-worth, and purpose? The contract of free association agreement with the United States, which sustains most of our government operations, will expire in 20, 2023. What happens to us then? We know that the trust fund set up under the contract is not enough. What will be our choices then? Is dependency on foreign countries for our livelihood our only option? This may have been a case for people in my generation, but I sincerely hope this will not be the case when you take over your leadership roles to lead RNI forward. I challenge you to seek solutions, not only to the financial crisis that will soon face us, but also to find creative solutions to help, help us unlearn the sense of dependency that has made us who we are today. I think dependency is a disease that is more menacing than diabetes, TB, and other health uh, issues facing us because it is subconscious. It is a cancer of our emotional well-being, which because, which induces a lack of self-worth. But like other diseases, it can be cured. Depending on others to take care of us, was learned, and like other learned values and behaviors, this can be unlearned. No doubt it will take time to unlearn such a complex emotional behavior or barrier, but it must be done. Your generation must keep in mind that our ancestors were proud people who lived, survived, and thrived in these islands long before they were discovered by outsiders. Our ancestors learned to live productively and sustainable in these islands. They approach life with a can-do attitude as implied not only in technologies they invented, like the sailing canoes, but also in martially saying such as Mama and Kaimagran, or men who dare to face the challenges of the new day, or Karayana and Kiri, or women and her creative and artistic solutions. These sayings imply men and women who took charge of their own lives, or people who were resilient, they did not give up when, the, when things get rough and tough. They did not wait for others to come to their rescue or provide for them. For your generation, the sayings also imply that, so, that the solutions to our problems, whatever they might be, rest within and among each of us. Finally, I want to speak to the graduate about mega skills for success. This is 21st century, so we need to look forward. As you graduate and go into the world of work, your own, uh, you will find many opportunities, many of which will be complex and require 21st century mega skills. Mega skills are the skills of the mind that direct attitudes and abilities. These skills are bigger than the ordinary skills like run, read, write, and sing. These, help, these skills help us put ordinary skills we learn into application. These mega skills include confidence, feeling able to do it, motivation, wanting to do it, effort, being willing to work hard, responsibility, doing what is right, initiative, moving into action, perseverance, completing what you start, caring, showing concern for others, teamwork, working with others, common sense, using good judgment, problem solving, putting what you know and with what you can do into action, technology literate, ability to use the internet to search for information, and social networking skills. Such skills will be needed to deal with new challenges facing RNI now and into the future. Climate change and global warming, affordable energy, food shortages, 
shortages of teachers and healthcare workers, child neglect and abuse, teen pregnancy, high unemployment, limited technology, transport, and other infrastructures, to name a few. Indeed, the life that will greet you when you walk into the real world tomorrow will be full of challenges that are both varied and complex. I trust CNI has equipped you with these new skills to face your world. More importantly, I hope you will use these skills you learn at CNI for the betterment of your people and your country. I trust that you will be resilient and you will find the purpose for which you were created. Before closing, I would like to pay tribute to all the parents and the support network that were there for the graduates during the last couple of years. There is no question that your support network of parents, grandparents, faculty, and friends contributed greatly to, uh, in your journey this, this far. They encouraged you and believed in you. They did not give up on your dreams. Congratulations to your parents for helping to make today what it is for these graduates. I know how proud you are. Life is a journey, and journeys in life are far from random. Far less orderly, perhaps. They are made of series of choices that are made along the way. How many times have we looked back on our choices and regret some of the choices we made? That is why it is important to be careful when making choices. Engage your heart, your gut, and your mind in every decision you make. Engage your whole self and your journey and your purpose will re reveal itself with the passage of time. From your, here on, you must become the leader in your own life's journey. Find your purpose in life and seek solutions from within yourselves and from your God. And along the way, strengthen those relationships that nurture your personal growth and well-being and remember your roots always. Como está?